Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dr. R Show. We'll be coming to your living rooms weekly to discuss various health topics with the help of medical experts in their respective fields. Meet my two very special assistants, Megan and Christina. And I am so excited because today is leg day. And then inhale as you lower back down. They will be with me every week to give us tips on healthy eating and proper exercise. Stretch and keep yourself hydrated. So welcome to my show as we both learn together. Hi everyone, and welcome to the Dr. R Show. On today's show, we'll be talking about aging and what can be done to improve the aging process. Baby boomers are aging and are reaching retirement age at the rate of 10,000 a day. While you can't stop aging, there are things that can be done to age better. Our goal is to prolong your health span, which is that period of time in one's life where we are in optimal health. Our first guest today is Donna Rosenberry. Don has been a patient of mine in my age management program for a number of years. She is the mother of four children and has seven grandchildren. By looking at her, you'll never believe her real age. She has really embraced her program, has enjoyed life to its fullest despite growing older like the rest of us. At what age did you start to feel the effects of aging? I'd say 50, 55. About 50. And uh, what did you notice? Oh, I had no energy, I had no libido. I, I just didn't feel good overall. And how long did you let that go before you decided to do something about it? I would say eight years, from like my 50s to 58. And so for eight years, you just dragged? I did. I did. And what bothered you the most of all those things? Oh, I think the hot flashes, the, um, the pains, the aches and pains. Um, I had sciatica problems, I had uh, plantar fasciitis, things like that that are hard to get rid of. Now tell us a little bit about your initial evaluation. What was that day like? What did you have to go through and um, how long did that whole process take? You know, I remember the evaluation took all day. Uh, we came in, we answered a long questionnaire. Um, had to take a test on the computer for mental acuity, which was really nerve-wracking. I was afraid I'd forget the question before I could answer. Um, we did exercise segments so they could tell how physically fit we were. Uh, we had nutrition counseling, and I really enjoyed that. Lunch was wonderful. Lunch was brought in. Um, it was a good day. It was a good day. I learned a lot. Yeah, so you had an evaluation literally from head to toe. Yes. We looked at your body composition to see how much fat and muscle you have. Yes. Looked how well your brain was working. Uh, looked at the health of your blood vessels and, and your health overall. And uh, to summarize a little bit of what we found, we found that your cholesterol is very high. Your thyroid was, was a wreck. You were a mess. And fortunately, we were able to fix all that. But. Uh, uh, Hormonally, you're, you're a wreck too, which a lot of women are once they go into menopause. In your particular case, you had no estrogen, no progesterone, very little testosterone, low thyroid, low vitamin D, low DHA, and your inflammatory markers were sky high. So I had a lot to work with, and the more I have to you work with, did. the better. As, the more broken you are, the, the better <laughs> I can make you. So, yes. so we'll put a plan in place, and what, ex what did we do? What did you end up doing to, to try to get uh, better and feel better? Besides supplements and correcting the hormone problems, uh, my eating, you really worked on an eating plan for us, uh, my husband and I, he's on the program too, and that was really beneficial because there were things that we were eating that I thought were healthy that were not. Um, exercise, you required us to have exercise, which was fun, we work out with weights three or four times a week and cardio the rest. We, uh, we've gotten so much better that we're snow skiing, we're hiking, we're playing with the grandkids more, traveling a lot. Life's great. Well, eating, that's a critical, critical thing because if you don't eat right and you put the wrong things in your body, nothing else will work. So you have to start with the right diet yes. and the right food. So. That is critical. Exercise, another very important thing. Without exercise, you're not going to get the body composition changes that you're looking for. Right. And third, correcting all the metabolic problems, mostly with diet, some with supplements, yes. and correcting the hormonal deficiencies you had and balancing your hormones, we're able to bring you back to life. Yes, I feel great. Yeah. 
And you did wonderfully. You've lost 22 pounds of fat in six months, and then you gained one and a half pounds of muscle in six months. For a woman, that's a hard thing to do, and it's challenging. Thanks. Now, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? Uh, what you can't, can't, what you can do now, what you couldn't do before? I played basketball with my 12 and my nine-year-old grandson the other day for about 45 minutes, and that was a workout, but it was a lot of fun, and I haven't been able to do that, or wouldn't have been able to do that without this program. Now, before the program, libido was low. How's that responded? Fabulous. Libido's good. <laughs> Excellent. I'm sure your husband's thrilled about that. He is. Yeah. Energy levels were, were poor. How are your yes. energy levels now? Great. Yeah. Great. And your outlook on life in general? I'm a happy camper. Well, thank you, Donna, for coming on the show. Thank I'm you. thrilled that you're doing so well, enjoying life with your friends and your family. Thank you. Coming up, we'll be talking to Dr. Van Bast about age management. We'll be right back. Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Megan and this is Christina and today's tip on Inside Fitness is going to be all about the shoulders. Now training the shoulders is very important because they're responsible in moving your arms. The major muscle in the shoulder is the deltoid, but then you also have your rotator cuff muscles. And I'm sure you've probably heard about the rotator cuff muscles a lot because it is very commonly injured. So we're going to show you a couple exercises today that are really going to help you strengthen those often injured and overused muscles in your shoulders. So a couple weeks ago, we actually showed you the shoulder press, which is one of the most common exercises. Mm -hmm. So that was with the dumbbells where you have a 90 degree angle and you're taking them just above your head and back down. That really does isolate those muscles, but in the event that you didn't have those around, this is a shoulder push-up that you can do at home that will really help engage those same muscles. So what you're going to do is you're going to get down on the floor and kind of get set up like you would for a push-up, but you're going to take your fingers and point them inward so that your elbows are going to go out. You want to start kind of in a downward dog position and just walk your feet pretty far in. You can even kind of get on your toes and bend your knees. This is really going to help kind of engage even sometimes the back of your legs as well as your abs. And then you're going to look straight down at the floor, keeping that straight line in your back and your neck, and you're going to do your one. This also really kind of helps work out your triceps as well. So your elbows are just going to go out as you just continuously push. Just try and get about 10 of those in, take a couple minutes of a break, and then go back and do it again. Remember, always doing your three sets of 10. Now that exercise is pretty tough, so we're going to show you one more, which is called the upright row. So we're going to do this one with dumbbells. So you're going to start feet shoulder width apart and palms are going to be facing you in front of your body. Now exhale as you raise the weights up to about chest height, letting the elbows come out to your sides. And then inhale as you lower back down, keeping the weights in front of your body. Right guys, and don't forget that you're always exhaling on the hard part. That way you can just kind of exert a little bit more energy. And as you'll notice when Megan's pulling those weights up, she's keeping a nice straight line across the back, making sure her posture is correct and making sure her feet are at least shoulder distance apart. Okay. So once you're done training the shoulders, be sure to stretch them out. So you want to take one arm across the body, really pull it into your chest and feel that stretch in your shoulder. Make sure you're engaging your core so you're not just kind of throwing your limbs around. You really want to isolate that muscle in the shoulder. Mm -hmm. And then we'll switch sides. And hold this stretch for 15 to 30 seconds and try to get three sets in. So that's going to be it today for Inside Fitness. We'll see you right back here same time next week. Don't forget to do your cool down. Always remember to stretch and stay hydrated. Hey guys, I'm Megan and this is Christina and today we're going to be talking about pasta or rather what to eat instead of pasta. We're putting together a spaghetti squash which is actually considered a fruit with some lentil sauce. So something really interesting is that fruits are actually anything with seeds. So we all know that tomatoes are actually a fruit, but something else too, like the squash. I mean, I always thought squash was a vegetable. Me too. And then what else? Bell peppers have seeds in them. Zucchini. Technically jalapenos. I mean, it's just crazy. Pasta is a high carbohydrate food that really has very few essential nutrients, so it's best to replace them with something that's packed with nutrients, like the spaghetti squash, or you can even use zucchini and just shred it up to make it look like noodles. Now, carbohydrates are an important source of energy for the body, so it is important to consume some carbs 
but just make sure that you're choosing the right types of carbs. So we've already prepared the spaghetti squash, which you just uh, take the seeds out and then you place it in the microwave for a few minutes, just cover it with some saran wrap, and then when you use a fork, it just starts to shred like noodles. And now we're gonna put together the lentil sauce. So we have some tomato sauce on low heat on the stove here. And we're gonna add about a cup of water. Christina, if you wanna help me add in a few of these ingredients. Sure. You can add in the red peppers. Okay. And I'm gonna add some garlic. Perfect. And you can add mushrooms if you like mushrooms. I love mushrooms. I like mushrooms too. Yum. About two stalks of celery. So the next on the list is Megan's favorite ingredient, Worcestershire sauce. About a teaspoon of that. Some yellow onions. About a tablespoon of olive oil. Perfect. And then we also have our lentils pre-prepared, which we just cooked on the stove for about 10 minutes. We just boiled them. Is that what we did? Yes. Okay. So this is also a really excellent vegetarian option. With the lentils, you're getting a lot of protein as well as other nutrients from the vegetables that we've added to the sauce. Yep. So it looks like we're ready to pour our sauce over. So let's okay. move this. how much that looks like spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Let's get a little bit more sauce in there. That looks amazing. Okay, so maybe this will give you a couple extra options that you can use instead of pasta. I mean, pretty much everything we've used today is a vegetable or a fruit, as we've learned. So we'll see you next time here on the Dr. R Show. Welcome back to the Dr. R Show. Our second guest today is Dr. Johan Van Bees. Dr. Van Bees has been one of my more challenging patients. Despite being the clinic director at Southwest Age Intervention Institute, my age management practice, he's a good example of the fact that you can still make significant inroads into better health and wellness despite slipping up every once in a while. You don't have to be perfect to make it work. Dr. Van Bees, thank you for coming on the show and sharing your story. When I first met you many years ago, I was a young neurosurgeon just out of practice you were in desperate straits, in horrible pain from a slipped disc in your neck. I operated on you on an emergency basis, and fortunately you did very well. At that time, you were a dashing Shakespeare. Over time, you became an elder Henry VIII. What happened? Yeah, the elder Henry VIII is probably a good answer, isn't it? I mean, but I, I remember that, that surgery. I, um, I was really in horrible pain, and when you did surgery on me, I woke up, I had absolutely no pain whatsoever. It was wonderful. But then as I became older, then the worst part about it was that you don't realize that changes are beginning to happen. And if I was wise, if I had been wise, and if I had thought this through, I would have started this at the age of 35. I wouldn't have become Henry VIII, and I would have remained a very, very handsome Petruchio. <laughs> so, but no, changes did happen. And they just occurred over time, and they occurred slowly. And at what age did you first suspect something was going on? Actually, I didn't. I, I really honestly didn't understand what was going on, and I don't think most people do. We are getting older, and we don't... We become... Men become grumpy old men, and our wives cannot stand us, our children think that we're a pain in the you-know-whats, and, and the people around us think that we're just overall grumpy. And that overall, we begin to change. So we decide at the age of 50 years old we're going to buy a Corvette and get a younger girlfriend. All bad ideas, by the way. But that's exactly the changes that we feel because we don't really understand what's happening to us. So when did you think you weren't your, yourself? Looking back at 35, looking forward, or thinking back and looking forward at the time, 
by the age of 48, 47, I knew there was something not good. Well, looking back, in retrospect, what, what happened to you physically, emotionally, that you didn't realize was going on to begin with? The one most difficult thing, I suppose, was the fact that my energy levels were declining. I just couldn't think as clearly. Um, in the bedroom, I didn't have as much fun as I'd had beforehand, and I always liked that kind of fun. Um, nothing I could do, really, was going to take the weight off. And it just became worse and worse. And you'd go home, you'd have dinner, and fall asleep on the couch. Now I go home, I have dinner, and I go to bed at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock at night, or in the morning in this case. So. And what was the impact of this on your wife and your family? Really, honestly, truly, it wasn't good. I was really grumpy. And in fact, the first change that I ever noticed was not that I just only felt better. It was just that I was not a grump. I had a better outlook on life. The glass was not half empty, it was half full. It was a tremendous change. And I felt very good about that. Well, tell us a little bit about your initial evaluation. Seven hours in length. I mean, long, long time. I, I had to fill out paperwork beforehand, and the paperwork sort of outlined my history. And when I came to the office, I had a um, what is called the body composition scan, looking at the fat and lean of the body and its distribution. And that wasn't a pleasant picture. I know you've got a picture of me, so I, I, I know that's not a pleasant picture. Then we did a um, bone mineral density scan. You know, we always think that it's just the women that lose the bone mineral density. It isn't. It's the men as well. So that, you know, uh, that was done. I did a mental acuity evaluation. Now, generally speaking, as far as I'm concerned, women do better than men, and I certainly did horribly. My mind wasn't functioning clearly. I, I didn't think as well. Um, I had an ultrasound of the carotid arteries, and that was truly not a pretty picture. The carotid arteries, meaning that the thickness of the arterial wall was their plaque formation, etc., etc. And, and my picture wasn't good. So it's obvious that my, my, um, my, uh, my health was, had been impaired. And then I was schooled when it came to nutrition. And then at the end of the day, I sat down and everything was explained to me. Now, one of the best things is, is the blood work that you did. The blood work covers so many biomarkers. It covers the markers of inflammation, the risk factors for disease, and 13 different hormone levels. So it wasn't just one hormone that you set out to rebalance. You set out to rebalance all of those. And I think that's the beginning of health. And over, t over time, generally speaking, year after year, instead of going through decline, slowly but surely, I am getting better. It is slowly but surely, but I am getting better. <laughs> so. so what were the results in terms of your lab work, your body composition? Body composition was absolutely terrible. I mean, I lost, I've lost about 11 or 12% body fat. I've lost lots of pounds of fat. I was a very, very cuddly fellow. Um, I gained lean muscle mass. My blood work, which was almost indica indicative of me being diabetic, is nowhere close to that now. My hormone levels, which had tanked, totally and absolutely tanked, were now totally normal, in fact. Um, and that was then the picture of health. Remember, if blood work remained normal and remained normal over time and can stay normal, the chances of getting ill was going to be less. And that's important. So it was the blood work, which you explained to me ad infinitum, um, that we needed to change that blood work, make it healthy, and then keep it that way. And remember, the thing is, what's so very, very good about it, two months after I started the program, that same blood work, which I had done beforehand, was then done again. And I do that blood work three to four times every single year. And there's no small blood work. There's always going to be the full blood work. You can monitor every biomarker. It's perfect. You can see changes as they occur. And adapt to them. 
So what do we, what do we put into place? What did your program consist of? In my case, it was going to be uh, four things. The program is four things. The focus on exercise, the focus on proper nutrition, the use of nutritional supplements as so the blood work shows and examination reveals, and then also hormone replacement therapy, allowing hormone levels to trend back to where they would have been for us between the ages of 30 and 40. And in that manner, allowing us to rebuild muscle strength, re-get to feel um, that we have actually not a loss of focused thinking. Because remember that when, when it comes to hormone replacement, when you look at it, the number one receptor sites are actually going to be the cardiovascular system, your brain. So if these things, if the hormone levels are lower and out of balance, that is why we put on fat, we lose lean muscle mass, we don't think as clearly, we have foggy thinking, and we are less tolerant, and that means the grumpy old man thing. Now, you've been on this program a number of years. Mm -hmm. What has kept you from going too far off program that has maintained good results, good quality of life over, say, I think six years now? Yes. Yeah. Everybody has a coach. Tiger Woods has a coach, okay? Everybody needs a coach, and I think that that's where you've come in. All along, you've been a coach, and you said, okay, look, this number's not good. We need to do something about it. Let's focus on that. Let's go and do this blood work again in three months' time, and let's check on those numbers once more. And in that sense, you're always work, working towards a goal, slowly but surely getting there. And I have to admit that my blood work has, over the years, slowly and steadily gotten better. This for a person getting older. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Van Bates, for coming on the show. I'm delighted with the progress you've made and continue to make, and for all of your help with our patients to keep them healthy, happy, and motivated. And I want to thank all of our viewers for watching the show today. My hope is that every one of you utilizes the tools that are available to you to live a long, healthy, and happy, and active life. Until next time, healthy living, and goodbye.